Hi everybody, it's the ninth day of April 2024. Boom, we're back. <clears throat> I'm Dana Dernford. You can call in at 709-589-4406. Here we go, rock and roll. <laughs> Alrighty, I think we're good to go. So we're going to go through a new cycle tonight. A big shot new cycle on Fukushima and nuclear news. Looks like uh, the last show we were having problems with the so-called no data. That appears to be a hack. It looked like they hacked me. So if Refresh your page because it just uh, redone security codes and it might screw you up if you were sitting on the video for the last five or ten minutes. <clears throat> Don't forget to click around a little tiny bit. Can't hurt. That's a reactor three detonating in the background. And so just that reactor alone, which was a mixed oxide fuel reactor, is worse than all current reactors in history. I'm going to take my own advice and refresh that page. Here we go. Kyoto University Symposium on Nuclear Compensation in Fukushima. This is an interesting one. You're 13 years down the road and they're having And they're having, uh, don't ask me what that headline is. Oh, that was, uh, right. So this was 2016. And in 2016, they had 30 million one-ton bags of radiation. 30 million one-ton bags of radiation. It was 105,000 sites in 2019, but there was actually 150,000 sites in 2016. 150,000 sites. And so they've been denying them compensation ever since. And the ones who did get any type of compensation was a fraction of their losses, if they were lucky. I got everything jumping on my screen here. Just before I went live, my computer decided to reboot. <coughs> Let's keep going here. Right, back to this one. Kyoto, on February the 17th and 18th, the, study, the story just came out a few days ago, Kyoto University held a symposium in Kyoto entitled Nuclear, and which have betrayed the Fukushima to Japanese people across the entire country for 13 years. Held a symposium in Kyoto entitled Nuclear Accident Compensation Following the Great Eastern Japan Earthquake, Reconstruction, History in the Future, co-sponsored by Social Science Unit for Research and Education, Nikoyoto Institute of Economic Research. So to give himself these grandioso names and then abrogate any kind of responsibilities immediately. And the poll tonight kind of help articulates that. After 13 years, should nuclear scientists work at Fukushima 4 reactors and 8 nuclear fuel meltdown site? Because nuclear scientists still haven't worked at that site 13 years later. It's just the victims of society, the homeless, the destitute, the immigrants that don't speak the language, and the list goes very long. Because they had multiple reactors and fuel pools detonate and throw the inventories, the reactor cores all over the site. And so they picked up 30 million one-ton bags off-site around the prefecture, but they also cleaned up other prefectures. It wasn't just Fukushima Prefecture. For instance, the, they can't get rid of the sewage in Tokyo, 240 kilometers away, because it's too radioactive. The sewage. 
And the numbers we're talking about are stunning. They can't get rid of the water uh, from the water filtration facilities, from water reclamation where they filter the water. They can't get rid of that sediment. And the tonnage we're talking about is stunning numbers again. Because it's too radioactive. They can't get rid of uh, the ashes from the incinerators because the ashes are too radioactive to get rid of. And so you can't destroy radiation by burning it in the incinerator. So imagine how contaminated the country keeps becoming because they burn this stuff and liberate the radiation back into the environment. By squarely recognizing environmental damages. So how can you not recognize the environmental damages when you picked up 30 million one-ton bags of radiation? So how can you not recognize that as an environmental damages and why are they talking about it 13 years later and trying to become... How come the university didn't stand up for the last 13 years, right? Because they're your enemy. The number of victims represented by the attorneys has fallen sharply because the victims and the claimants are often not knowledgeable themselves about the law and the universities are not going to be there to help them. So imagine... It's hard to comprehend how many bags we're talking about just underneath these tarps. It's, just, it's, it's extraordinary. There's nothing else in history that we can look at to compare it to. So the framework for the compensation handling trial and error has generally been praised, although there may there are many concerns that also exist. He went on to say that the Japan's acquired expertise, which are scumbag degenerate monsters, was valuable and would be helpful in proving such systems elsewhere. The last thing you want to do is model Japan to an accident, nuclear accident anywhere else on the planet. And they'd get an F if it was a report card on every facet of it. And the Japan sh should disseminate internationally what it had learned. It learned nothing. It's 13 years later, it still refuses to acknowledge it picked up 30 million one-ton bags. It refuses to compensate the people that were poisoned or displaced or traumatized or injured or died because of the radiation. Matsuro also said the Nuclear Damage Compensation Dispute Resolution Center, which promotes voluntary out-of-court settlements of dispute. Why do out-of-court? Because they don't want to set a precedence that the other victims could use now to get proper restitution. Despite having a few issues, such as the shortages of human resources, well, they had enough resources to pick up 30 million one-ton bags, didn't they? Try wrapping your mind around the enormity of that statement. It plays a very key role as you're receiving venue for out-of-court relief cases. Basically, you're going to get, if you're lucky, 1 25th of what you should have been getting. I think they're de nothing but degenerates. And speaking of degenerates, this is the English teachers from different countries that go into the nuclear wasteland and pretend that everything is normal. And they have to drive past millions of one-ton bags of radiation to get to work every day. And they still live in denial. So imagine what kind of morons these people actually are. The allure of Japan's food culture spread by visitors via social media, spread by visitors. And they were actually paying visitors uh, something like $75 to speak positively about Fukushima on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook or anything like that. Now, that's quite a few years ago. Anybody went there, it was a well-disciplined sucker. And while these people all look like normal humans, they, they have no common sense. And they're teachers, but they're not really teacher teachers. They're the so-called, they live on the fringe of teachers. They're the English teachers. They don't have degrees or anything. And they teach Japanese English. They, they are teacher assistants, basically. And a degenerate James Colbert got his start down there with that particular job. Amid the growing global interest in Japan's cuisine, there is no global interest in Japan's radioactive food. The Japan External Trade Organization is Japan Food Products Overseas Promotion Center, JFUDO, 
Recently welcomed international visitors deeply interested in radioactive food and radioactive food culture. See, pretending this never happened is not a solution. The only time we're going to have any solutions when you admit that you got a problem. Until then, they're the very last people on this planet you want to be trusting. And I wouldn't eat anything from Japan for at least a couple of million years. In partnerships with the Council of Local Authorities for the International Relationship, Relations Clear, JFU Do, selected 21 individuals that had previously participated in the Japan Exchange and Teaching Program. And we've called out a lot of those people who wrote outrageous uh, op-eds for medias that were completely dishonest and dangerous. You won't see them down there on top of the bags here saying how safe Fukushima is. These individuals hailing from six English-speaking countries, United States, disgusting Canada, morons Australia, the degenerate United Kingdom, Singapore, Trinidad, and Tobago, underwent a special selection process to participate in the cover-up. So the people that were going to they, they hand-picked were the people that were willing to ignore that completely. Underwent a special selection process to participate I wonder what the special selection process was. Oh, you worked in the nuclear wasteland. Oh, you're good. You're stupid enough. You'll fit right in. From February 18 to the 24, participants toured the prefectures of Iwati, Miyati, and nuclear wasteland Fukushima in the Tohoku region as well as Akito. What would you go to Akito for, which is on the other spectrum of the country? EU to lift import curbs on rice from Fukushima, more deals likely. Again, this is completely dishonest. Well, they eventually released it, but this was probably seven years before they, re they removed the, the deadly restrictions. You should never remove the restrictions. By engaging in activities such as learning about the harvesting of products, participating in agricultural tours, observing the processing of seafood and exploring the production of alcoholic drinks like whiskey, wine, and sake. Well, they didn't go here and, and uh, mire the farmer grown food in a nuclear wasteland right alongside one-ton bags of radiation by chance. Uh, can you imagine how stupid you got to be to work for that industry? How useless of a human you actually got to be to participate in something like this? The program also sought to highlight the safety of the Japanese food. Well, how can you highlight the safety of food when you're growing it right alongside of one-ton bags of radiation? Like you're a piece of shit country is what you actually are. And face it. The program also sought to highlight the safety of the nuclear food and address local concerns regard local concerns regarding the discharged treated water from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant. You can't treat water from a nuclear meltdown, first off. <clears throat> the discharge of the tree to water. And every time you hear something like that, we should all hang our heads in absolute humiliation that people exist on a planet that would lie about Fukushima. So they're claiming that never happened. That's the official story, by the way. The International Atomic Energy Agency says that never happened. As of July the 13th, 2023, they moved the goalpost. You can't treat water. Listen, you picked up 30 million one-ton bags. You can't treat the 30 million one-ton bags. <clears throat> Every time it rains, it goes right through the bags. The bags were only built to last a little while. I tried drinking my tea the night before. It cools off too much. Uh, Yumin uh, Mura, a system manager to oversee promotional planning section at J Fudo, spoke on the safety of Japanese food products, the safety of food from a nuclear wasteland. They're not down there stood on top of them bags going, hey, look, it's fantastic. It's, look how nice it is. Like, really, they got the job because they're completely disconnected from the human experience. During their time at the Matsu Kawashura fishing port in Fukushima Prefecture, the participants received 
detailed explanations from a local tourist association representative about the 2011 Great Eastern Japan earthquake and the safety measures for food. There is no safety measures for food. They abandoned the communities, for goodness sakes. They picked up 30 million one-ton bags, which is only 3% of the land they wanted people that was complacent to move back into them. Right? And so, yeah, they look like normal people. They're, they're the furthest thing from it. They're morons. They're in a nuclear wasteland, for goodness sakes. They're literally the, the scourge of Earth. They're the worst that humanity has to offer. Japan has established the world's strictest standards for testing radioactive material and food products. Japan has done no such thing. I mean, Japan is a nuclear wasteland. They're, they're now claiming there's no nuclear meltdown. You buried the entire planet in radioactive fallout, and you're suggesting you have the strictest standards, you despicable little st stupid idiot slant-eyed nipperheads, you morons. You shit for brains have poisoned our entire ecosystem. You revolting parasites. You maggots of humanity. And you scourge of the 8 million species. This is a model of the radioactive fallout based on 30 days covers the entire planet at a million to 10 million atoms per cubic meter of air. Of gamma, CC-137, which pulses 600 feet every second for 300 years. Of course, it's going to be saturated with everything else. It can't just be cesium plumes. They learned that these standards are 12 times stricter than those in the United States and the EU. Now, the EU and the United States raised their limit uh, to 1,000 to 1,200 atoms per kilogram. After Fukushima, Japan raised theirs to 500 originally, so it was just double at that stage, right? A year later, they dropped it down to 100 atoms per kilogram because they had 865,000 extra cancers in the first year. Like, you, like you, re you really are, anybody that works for this media is, and participated in this deceit and dishonesty are truly the worst of the worst that humans have to offer. They're truly the degenerate monsters that I make them out to be. And look at them, trying to look like they're humans. How, how dare them? They learned that these standards are 12 times stricter than those in the United States. Well, if they were 12 times stricter, then why are you growing food in a nuclear wasteland right alongside the one-ton bags of radiation? You, you despicable monsters. You disgusting parasites. That's why nuclear, everybody in the nuclear industry is the best way to describe them as despicable parasites. They're parasitic, right? While many participants had prior knowledge of the earthquake's effects from media coverage, their visit to Fukushima significantly deepened their understanding of the food safety. So how can going into a nuclear wasteland significantly deepen their understandings of food safety when there is no food safety, when it's the homeless and the destitute, the victims of society, the immigrants who don't speak the language that are the, the victims and the employees. You don't see him walking around on 30 million one-ton bags right in Dana is wrong. I can tell you that much. And I don't understand why the rest of the world is not vehemently opposing this betrayal of humanity and the 8 million species. I can't possibly comprehend the betrayal. And what hope does the average person have if I can't comprehend it? So they didn't tour the millions and millions and millions and millions and millions. You know, if you stack these bags, um, it's five rows of traffic in one-ton trucks. If you put one-ton bag, 2,200-pound bags, in the back of a one-ton truck, bumper to bumper, that's five rows of traffic around the planet, which is only 3% of the land, but it, which means that the rest of it got immediately contaminated again because you only got 3% of the land. Tour participants watch footage on the fishing port greatly affected by the earthquake. So they handpicked the most docile, the most evil of the participants. It's just... It's heartbreaking that people would allow themselves to be used to manipulate and destroy humanity and the 8 million species, because that's their job. Their job is to trick everybody. 
Their job is to poison everybody by deceit and deception. It's truly the lowest form of life to take that particular job, and they know it. They know. They worked there. They seen the millions and millions of one-ton bags. They know the difference. And one day in Miyagi, the group savored a variety of dishes. Again, for what? For a few thousand dollars. Because that's what you're talking about. That's what you basically got. Free hotel rooms. You don't see them there walking around, do you? Parasites. Despicable parasites. Participants were not only captivated by the deliciousness of the Japanese. Well, you can't quantify food by taste in a nuclear wasteland. And the people that wrote the story should do life in jail because you're going to poison thousands of people. And in the Fukushima city of Koryama, which is an unbelievable nuclear wasteland, where every building in this city of 360,000 people, there's 90,000 buildings, every building is entitled to be decontaminated from radiation. But you can't decontaminate a building from radiation. It's unbelievable that people would sell their souls to the nuclear industry so easily. And the participants that the murderers visited many other places as well have been sharing their experiences on social media. Scum degenerate monsters, including with photos and videos broadcasting the excellent of the Japanese cuisine worldwide using the at JFoodDo hashtag, which I have in my description tonight. You don't see them there stood up asking these people about how many people disappeared. I despise every one of these people with every fiber in my body, with every fiber of humanity should despise these people's existence. These are scum. They should be in jail, every one of them. And particularly the people that wrote the article, they should get the death penalty in Japan because it's legal. And it's appropriate for people who write stories like this in order to manipulate people and poison them, should definitely get the death penalty. He said that Jay Fudo will continue to support such dissemination to the extent the wonderful elements of the Japanese food and food culture to the world at large. Where they got, in 2019, they had 105,000 sites of one-ton bags, 105,000 sites. Taiwan, 5.1 magnitude earthquake off the east coast. Uh, this was yesterday. They had another major. I, I, I think we got it here. Let me get to it here. And they got 739 aftershocks uh, with the magnitude between 3 and 6.5. Of course, the Japanese and the Taiwan, excuse me, are using the Shindu scale, which we've never seen mentioned hardly ever at all. And the Shindu scale is 1 to 7. And so you have to multiply, and it only goes in increments of 5. So 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3 3.5, 4. And so each one is equal to a 1.428 on the Richter scale. And they're demolishing these buildings apparently now. But they just dodged a nuclear bullet, right? But hit last week by a devastating magnitude 7.2 earthquake because they use both the, the magnitude of the Richter scale and the Shindu scale. And they do that in order to confuse people, particularly about the nuclear facets of the story. And there is nuclear reactors close by. They were shut down, but the fuel pools are still full of uh, reactor cores. And look at these. They give you the distance and the depth. And Japan doesn't give you the distance. It only gives you the depth. Japan is despicable. It's a despicable, it's a despicable country. It was detected 32.1 kilometers northeast of the Hanlu, Hailu County and at a depth of 5.1 kilometers. Russian forces shoot down a drone over the Zephyphoria nuclear power plant. Have you seen the videos? What they're doing down there in Ukraine and Russia, they're using drones, like drones that were this big, with bombs attached to them, to chase people down and blow them up. 
So you, there's no way you can hide because it'll just come around the building and blow you up. And uh, I've seen hundreds of videos of people desperately fighting for their lives, throwing stuff at the drone. The drone You can literally hear the drone, the people operating the drone laughing on the other side. And they're just sitting there miles away and they're just waiting for the chance and they go in and they blow the person up. You got any idea how disconnected that is from any kind of reality? Well, well for starters, you can't use cluster bombs because they're so random, right? And they're so destructive on top of that, right? You can't use all kinds of munitions because they're so evil. I think the drones should long be applied. That particular attribute should be applied to them. How can anybody sit there and call it a war, chase somebody down. And the conscripts that they're chasing down are people that they stole off the streets that have no experience, that never wanted to go to war in the first place. They're conscripted at gunpoint, put into a uniform, and set out there to be massacred by drones. That piece of shit Zelensky, that degenerate, hideous, odious monster Zelensky, and yesterday, all the headlines were about this story here. All of them. Nuclear safety not compromised by drone attacks. These, like a drone is a very pacific, it's not like something random. It's not like you're lobbing artillery shells, right? You're, you're pinpoint accuracy. That's what a drone is. It's pinpoint. If you're in a foxhole, it can dive right down into the foxhole and go over, around obstacles, and go straight into the foxholes and kill you. So, when the time of nuclear safety not compromised by drone attacks is Zaporia and the, the piece of shit International Atomic Energy Agency, these are literally monsters we're talking about, by the way. Uh, if you want to take down a nuclear power plant, all you do is cut off its power supply. So there's, there's only a few wires, uh, power supplies coming into the plant. It runs on external power. All the drones have to do is go blow up those. Right? That's how you would do it if you were sincere, and everybody knows that, is you just disconnect the external power supply. And then their generators, all you got to do is just blow up their power supplies where they're sending electricity out. But with a drone, it's mindless. It's mindless to do it. Five or six drones can take it down. Cops detained two men at the Delhi airport for a nuclear bomb threat. A nuclear bomb threat. <clears throat> a nuclear bomb threat. This is, a, again, you got a couple of morons. They were released on bail, which means it wasn't, obviously it's not serious. According to the FIR Foiled by the airline official. Like calling these people official is a big mistake because their heads swell up and now they become morons. The two asked the security staff, what will you do if I am carrying a nuclear bomb? Like, they should be, you know, get a $500 fine for being a moron. But the industry loves to use nuclear as a fear-mongering tool. So when you read the headline for nuclear bomb threat, it wasn't a nuclear bomb. There was no nuclear bomb. But the real nuclear bomb is radio pharmaceuticals. Iran is among the world's top three manufacturers of lethal radioactive pharmaceuticals. These are not pharmaceuticals. These are death pills. Radiation doesn't cure anything. It can't cure anything. And if you manage to kill a tumor, you created around 10 more. Or treat certain diseases. You can't treat any diseases with radiation. You disgusting maggots. Nuclear medicine and radiation therapy. There is no nuclear medicine. There is no radiation therapy. I'll, you know, and I, every once in a while I'll bring out 40 or 50 or 60 or 70 academic studies showing you what radiation theory, therapy really is. It's genocide. There is no therapy. You destroy everything else in your body. Ramped up the extent of radiation-related activities by 2.5 times compared to the preceding years. 
So what Iran is trying to do is, is say that we're using nuclear for good purposes. There is no good purposes for anthropogenic man-made radiation. There really isn't. Anything man-made nuclear can do, any other kind of technology can do it 100 times better. Iran has maintained its progress in the fields of science required for the production of sophisticated, sophisticated and cutting edge, again, these words they're using, radiopharmaceuticals by employing alpha particles, which pulses around 600 feet, for therapeutic methods. There is no therapeutic methods. And made spectacular advances in the treatment of cancer patients. No, you created the cancer patients. They're from... 80 years of emissions from nuclear disease factories. The Atomic Energy Agency chief in Iran announced plans to inaugurate 50 clinics across the country, 50 nuclear clinics that would utilize plasma technology for the treatment of wounds, noting that the local experts have manufactured a homegrown system that is fitted in operating rooms and is used for the treatment of breast cancer. Again, it doesn't work. Like man-made radiation, the minute it goes in your body, your body attacks it for the rest of your life with white blood cells and tries to build a tumor around it. It's the worst thing you can put in your body. There is no redeeming qualities to this stuff. Canada moles getting nuclear submarines. <laughs> well, Canada's got three submarines. I don't know if anybody's aware of that. We actually got three. They're all at the West Edmonton Mall in Alberta. You can pay three bucks and go take a little tour in a, in a massive swimming pool they got in the mall. Justin Trudeau, I like just the young global leader, Justin Trudeau, with the World Economic Forum. All he's done now is he destroyed Canada. He's got Canada completely destroyed. Not, uh, around 90% of the population in Canada can't even afford to go pick their children up at school because the prices of fuel, for instance. They can't heat their house in the wintertime because the, they, they, right, they banned the commodities from Russia and they had no way of replacing it. So they created this artificial inflation and it's never going to go away. And they've done that at all United Nations countries, right? Immediately. And then everybody else was stuck in the same. It, they're despicable creatures. I can't understand it. I can't comprehend it. And he, he was there saying how he just gave $9 billion to Ukraine. And it's a tough decision. And we got to do it because if Ukraine doesn't win, then we're all going to be speaking uh, Ruskies in, in the near future. And how uh, it's important to save Canada. Like, what is he talking about? Canada, which is supposed to be a peace country, is not participating in any of this. Since he got into um, dictatorship there, he has now essentially destroyed Canada and the Canadians' ability to survive day to day. And he targeted the most vulnerable boy. He caused so much inflation now, it's horrifying what he's got done to our country. It's horrifying what this maggot, this parasite, this degenerate from the World Economic Forum has got done to us. It's revolting. Ottawa must bolster its military capabilities in the Arctic. Like, if Canada bolsters its military capabilities in the Arctic, it, Canada's not a military, right? It's, it's got three nuclear, it's three subs, they're all at the West Edmonton Mall. Canada's not a military. Canada's not going to fight anybody off. It just makes me sick to my guts that someone like that, a single person, is capable of destroying a country. We really got to get rid of prime ministers. We really got to get rid of presidents. They have no redeeming qualities for your countries. Their job is to, is to steal and give away everything in your country. And now they've accelerated that and they have ruined everybody's future. Where do we draw a line? We, we need a lot more. JFK is going on. Rolls-Royce secures 1.2 million additional funding to advance a nuclear power projects. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, what is 1.2 million dollars going to do for nuclear? Why is that a headline? Why would you even put that in the media for? 
Like, first off, Rolls Royce got tons of money. They don't need to steal the taxpayers' money constantly, but that's all they're doing. The only money they're investing is nothing. They're taking all the money from the taxpayers only. And they haven't produced a single reactor. And there's nothing, they don't even have a license application into the regulatory agencies. And for 1.2 million sterlings, they literally can't do a single thing. All the money goes to administration. Rather than coming up with solutions, located the Rolls Royce submarines in the Boiling Water X technology, a US based nuclear supplier to the utilize fusion nuclear systems for space exploration missions. Again, like, or fission nuclear systems. Like, we could solve all of our energy with geothermal. There's, it's so simple. It's, it's ridiculously stupid. Every community could have its own geothermal plant in 12 months or less. Any contractor can build it. You don't have to pollute the planet for a billion years to, to get a couple of uh, decades of power. First Australian industry staff enters a nuclear training program. Like stupid never takes a break. And that's why nuclear, nuclear is the definition of idiot. So the first Australian, they spent 370 billion dollars on a handful, less than a handful of nuclear submarines. It, it doesn't even make any sense at all. How many people are worried about Australia's military? There's nobody on the planet worried about Australia's military. It's strictly about stealing the money from the country so the country doesn't have a future. That's what we see with this industry over and over and over. The first RAN officers, you can imagine what kind of morons they actually are, from the nuclear, nuclear technology course in both the United States and the United Kingdom. Again, like, these are, you're talking about idiots. Anybody who takes that job is, meets the definition of an idiot. These are the definition of stupid. The first three Royal Australian Navy submarine officers completed the U.S. Navy nuclear power training pipeline and on track to graduate from the submarine officer's basic course. It's so stupid it defies logic that this could even happen. Solar eclipse yesterday paused 30 nuclear reactors worth of solar generation. Like, why would you even put that out there? The eclipse was like just a few minutes long. It's a, the, the media is not what we think they are. The media is your enemy. Nuclear war is so devastating, survivors will envy the dead. Nuclear fallout so devastating, the survivors will envy the dead. Oh, of course, you know what they're talking about. A lightning attack from North Korea would leave the United States president six minutes to decide the fate of the world. First off, North Korea is surrounded by nuclear weapons from the United Kingdom, from Europe, and from America. You know, the reason North Korea, they need a boogeyman, right? You got to have a boogeyman. You got Russia, you got North Korea, and kind of China, right? And they use North Korea as justifications to invest your pensions and your children's futures into bringing weapons and, and stocking military bases close to North Korea. Oh, they're going to get you. Oh, they're going to get you. Do you know how many people North Korea attacked in the last 74 years? Well, the last 150 years. They didn't attack anybody. For, for pre-Hiroshima Nagasaki, for 50 years, they were occupied by Japan. So when Hiroshima Nagasaki happened, Japan had to leave, obviously, right? So now North, South Korea tried to take over North Korea. North Korea tried to defend itself. United Nations, which at that time was called the League of Nations, changed its name to United Nations, and now had a military, went in and, and, and used more munitions on North Korea than was used in the entire World War II theater, on this little tiny speck of a country, because they wanted the natural resources, because that's a very resource-intensive part of 
of land mass. We don't have a lot of land mass. And this was empire building, right? And so for 70 years, now the United Nations went there and they killed millions of civilians, millions of children, millions of women in order to get North Korea to surrender. North Korea wouldn't send, sur surrender because they've been occupied for 50 years and they were fighting for their survival. And for 70 years, they've had land, sea, and air embargoes for medicines and hospital equipment and everything else, school supplies. The United Nations has hold against North Korea. And then they demonize North Korea for trying to be have a life and try to be free. So 150 years of being occupied, it roughly, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 120 years of being occupied with no end in sight. And they need a boogeyman, right? They need a boogeyman to justify the nuclear weapons. They need a boogeyman to justify the massive, the massive gouging of the country's economy. North Korea is not going to attack anybody. They just want to be free like anybody else. UK plans a fleet of 40 small nuclear reactors to meet their energy needs. This is uh, interesting engineering, and they're, they're so pro-nuclear. I think they get up and they pray to a nuclear bomb every morning when they wake up at that. I don't know if you want to call it a media, but it's not a media. It's a hate machine. First off, there's zero possibility they're going to build 40 small modular reactors because renewables have already curb stomped everything else on the planet. An artist's impression of a four unit 100, uh, XE 100 power plant. So this is an artist's rendition. This is not a real picture. Why? And they make all of these, usually they look like uh, usually they look like their uh, like new scales reactors look like a uh, um, ice cream container flipped upside down. They're literally the stupidest looking things you can imagine. With four point two three million in funding, like you can't do anything in nuclear with four point two three million. You literally can't do a single thing in nuclear. And 90% of everything that goes to nuclear is going to administration. It's not going to materials. It's going to administration. Like if they, took, if they took a little bit, a fraction of what they throw at this stupid idiotic fusion and this idiotic small modular reactors and put it into geothermal, we'd have our problems solved. They'd already be solved this year in 2024. They would all be solved right now. The geothermal is everywhere. What, why are we pretending it's not? It's so confusing that evil is allowed to exist but nothing else is. It supports the next step in developing advanced modular reactors and show our commitment to keeping the UK at the forefront of nuclear technology, the idiot added. First off, they don't have an application into the regulatory agency, so they're not at the forefront of anything. None of them are. None of them have applications into the regulatory agencies worldwide. Right? It's all speculators. And they're not trying to come up with solutions. So New Scale was the only one that had a partial application into the regulatory agencies. But they didn't try to build a reactor. They didn't even buy land. They didn't even try. They just kept stealing the money. And then the stock markets let them get on the stock markets where they robbed all the unsuspecting investors that have worked hard all their life to raise the money and retire and stole their money and tricked these people into investing in fusion and small modular reactors and it all flopped. It was a great big Ponzi scheme where they take the newest investors to pay off the older investors and eventually they go, oops. That's nuclear. Everywhere we look at nuclear, we see the same pattern and there's no one to hold them accountable. Everybody's pretending that it doesn't matter going to produce 565 degrees of steam. Well, 500, you can produce 1,000 degrees Celsius of steam with geothermal. So why would you even look at a small modular reactor? Anything small modular reactors can do, geothermal can do at least 100 times better and at least 100 times quicker with no adverse side effects. And you don't need a massive amount of people employed 
to maintain it. You just need a couple of dozen. It's all about looting. And they're so used now after 80 years of getting away with it. And they, they, uh, they steal the money then to raise their kids and put them through universities, through bursaries at these facilities so they can keep the chain of abuse going, right? At some point, you're going to have to look them in the eye and then spit in their face because that's the only solution you really got. You got to confront them and they're going to crap in their pants. You confront these people, they'll shit right in their pants, they'll dig it out and they'll wipe it all over their body to drive you away. That's their mentality. These are cowards. These are scumbags that need to be removed. Green groups gathered to denounce the nuclear fairy tale at the International Nuclear Energy Summit. The nuclear f we we covered that. Um, the Nuclear Energy Summit, which was organized by Raphael Grossi and crew at the International Atomic Energy Agency, which has no right to exist. Like these are monsters, the International Atomic Energy Agency. These are literally monsters are telling you that there's no nuclear meltdowns in Fukushima. And everybody sits there with the thumb up their ears at all our universities and media and, and, and regurgitates whatever narrative is is put in the memo each morning for them. Along with the demonstrations, over 600 civil society groups, including 11 signatories from New Brunswick, Canada, launched a declaration stating that the expansion of nuclear power is not the solution to the climate crisis. And because that's what they're trying to do, and we covered it when... If you go back, if you're really interested, you'll find it in my videos. Look up Nuclear Energy Summit. And uh, we play the videos. We play little clips of each of the major speakers. And that's what they all, that was their consensus. Was, we got to have nuclear because of climate change. Check, please. Of course, no, one, no one's buying into it, but they'll just go ahead and do it because they steal everything from your from your hospitals, you steal it from your schools, you steal it from your children. Nuclear energy is too slow to tackle the climate emergency and much more expensive than renewables and is dangerous. And time is precious. Too many governments are really wasting it with nuclear energy fairy tales. I get no traction whatsoever. I get no mentions in the media. And the people that buy into their narrative and argue their narratives, not argue, but protest their narratives are put on a pedestal. Anybody who goes out and protests tritium will get themselves in the media right away. <laughs> Anybody who protests uranium will never get hurt from again. Oh, tea cold, 45 minutes, we'll do that to you. The core strategy is the addition of 600 megawatts of small modular reactors at the Point Lepore generating station. Which is the Point Lepore generating station, New Brunswick, which is in the Bay of Fundy, right, slash Nova Scotia. Um, so like Sellafield produces 8 trillion atoms of tritium 3H each year. And that's legal to release it, 8 trillion atoms. Which is a stunning amount, right? The Point Lepore in New Brunswick releases legally each year 14,600,000 trillion atoms of tritium. But the Canadian reactors, the fleet of Canadian reactors, the Kando reactors, release more tritium 3H into the ecosystem than all nuclear power plants worldwide combined each year. The Canadian reactors are so dirty. It's, it's hard to comprehend it, but if you look up the Canadian Kandu reactors on my site, I've actually done a presentation, a three-hour presentation just on the Kandu reactors, because it took three hours to tell the basic story with academic studies of how vicious these polluters actually are. They're a scourge. They've polluted all the Great Lakes, which is the biggest aquifer in North America. I'm heartbroken that the world... It's not fighting back. I'm burnt out, too. <laughs> I'm doing it for so long. And that's why we had a couple of days off. I'm still burnt out, but... Um, 
I don't have a right to take time off. So I took a couple of days off because mentally I was losing my mind. I just didn't have it for Sunday and Monday. I just didn't have it. I just couldn't do it. I still I had all the work done, but I just couldn't go and do the show. It's hard. Like it's it's hard to comprehend how difficult it is to sit here for two hours and not screw up. Sit sit here for two hours and keep the energy going for two straight hours. It's like running a marathon. It really is. It's exhausting. And when the show is over, my shoulders are down and I'm just exhausted. And now the adrenaline is through your body because you just went for two hours straight, typically. It's a brutal pace. and But it's, the idea is to put the pressure on the nuclear industry and keep the story alive, right? To, to keep it pertinent, to keep it out in the forefront. And just because you see me censored, the numbers are very small. That don't mean that people are not watching the video. That don't mean that the industry is not aware and is watching this because the policymakers, the investors, they're going to watch these videos because there is nobody else on the planet in entire history has ever come out and done what I'm doing, doing educational programs. And some nights now I'm a little bit more testy where I'm a bit more uh, vocal about my displeasure with these despicable pieces of shit. And I'm not very good at hiding my contempt for these cocksuckers, these monsters, these despicable fucking demons, these these literally planet killer idiot machines. I'm I'm very I'm not very good at hiding it. And I don't even fucking try. I got nothing but contempt for these fuckers. All of them should meet with a fucking baseball bat. A company developing a design for a 100 megawatt liquid sodium cooled fast reactor for the Lepur site. Like, what are you talking about? Putting a small modular reactor. Why are you talking about small modular reactors when you could do geothermal? Why are you, why are you putting all your eggs in a basket of, and there's something that doesn't even exist when you can 12 months later have your geothermal plants up and running? Why the fuck would you do that? What's wrong with you people? Because nothing is allowed to exist on a nuclear. That's how they see the future. They want nuclear for everything. They want everybody to have a nuclear reactor up their fucking earth. I'm tired. I'm tired of the fucking sissies. The federal government gave an additional $7 million to ARC, as well as $50 million to Moltex, which, and these reactors they're talking about, by the way, are the plutonium mixed oxide reactors. These are this is absurd nuclear waste we're talking about, and and, and these small modular reactors. The studies are showing they're going to produce five times more nuclear fuel because there's no um, there's no scale of economies there. They're going to produce thirty times more intermediate level waste. They're going to produce thirty five times more high level waste than a conventional reactor of the same capacity. Why are we even looking at this? And it doesn't exist. There's no applications in the no regulatory agencies. And Moltex and ARC are both British companies that came to Canada and they want Canada to pay for every nickel, everything, for something that doesn't exist. And they want to take the reactor fuel that we currently have, 5.5 million bundles of reactor fuel, and turn it into mixed oxide fuel, plutonium mixed oxide fuel. But it's not just your typical madness mixed oxide fuel it's 15 percent high essay military grade in order to get the energy out of these small ones that somehow or another justifies it but they're disease factories it's, it's so bizarre that they even exist they exist because the nuclear industry has corrupted your universities, has corrupted all your medias, all your universities, all your key government positions. They corrupted all of it with the secrecy acts in the 40s and 50s and 60s. They never went away. You know, during the Manhattan Project, they had tens of thousands of scientists at the Manhattan Project, right? They had tens of thousands of spies spying on each one of them. They had tens of thousands more spying on the spies, and they had tens of thousands of more spies spying on those spies. And that industry has never lost, and this has to be secret for it to work. And they never went away. They're out there gobbling up your country's resources and monetary 
as we speak. And they got no one to pick on. There really isn't anyone left to pick on. Except for me and you, the people that are here. And you've seen how the video last week, right? Where we had just no data. It was actually streaming. That was a hack. They hacked us. At one point there, there was no sound. And I was talking to Stephen Young last night, which reminds me, I'll mention in a second. And Stephen was talking about there was a, some sound was missing. I forgot about it. That's where I had turned the sound down myself, right? When I was waiting for the stream to come back on live. That, that was me who had done that one. But I watched it, and other people who were watching it live told me that it, it never missed a beat. And because, remember, it didn't show that yellow banner across the screen that you typically get. So they're using some new technology on you folks. They were targeting you folks. The folks who didn't, who lost the stream, you were being targeted by your IP address. So when you get a chance, you need to unplug your IP, your Reuter, router and leave it unplugged for overnight at least so it can get a new IP address so you can break that chain or if you can uh, exchange your your router with your provider tell them you're not happy with the router it doesn't seem to be working the way you want it to be and don't take no for an answer and get a new router so they can't target your IP address and you can also reset your router while you're waiting and you can turn it off and try to get a new IP address that way, too. I'm going to move on from this story. I'm just going to get upset. Nuclear mayors are coming to Inglis. Nuclear mayors. Nuclear mayors. Try wrapping your mind around that particular statement. This is Canada's story. The mayors of two nuclear host communities will visit a potentially potential Northwest Ontario host community next week during the Northwest Nuclear Exploration Event. The Northwest Exploration Event. That's this week here we're talking about. It will be Blair Skinner's third time in English as a mayor of Panawa, Manitoba, and Adrian Foster's first visit to the township as the mayor of Clarington, Ontario. And we are so pleased to have the Mayor Skinhead and Mayor Fatass with us at this breakfast and throughout the nuclear exploration event. English Mayor Kim Shitface said Tuesday. English could become a member, which is Ontario, Canada, of the Canadian Association of Nuclear Host Communities. If, in fact, we move forward as a willing host community for a deep geological repository, the shit for brains at it. She'll poison all the farms and all the communities. The fuel is all vented. You can't contain the fuel and come there and then let it out of the cast. So everything is vented. A site south of the Trans-Canada Highway between Inglis and Wabigu, and I apologize if it butchers any names out of the communities, Lake uh, Ojibwa Nation, which is a native community up there, is on the Nuclear Waste Management Organization's shortlist. The visiting mayors will be guests at a free breakfast on April 13th, the second day of a nuclear event at the Ingus Recreation Center. So on the 11th, they're going to have a big uh, hoo-ha. I should be up there. If I was up there, we would scuttle that right away. They wouldn't have a fucking chance. We would destroy them. I don't have any ability to go there. I don't have the funds. The money that we do raise just barely keeps the operation moving forward. But I, sh I should 100% be up there. Right? This, these are the types of things that I should be showing up to. But it's, uh, it's 3,000 miles away. I have no way of getting there. And I can't afford to go there. I can't afford hotels. And um, this is one of our few opportunities we got to go confront these fucking monsters. And we're going to miss it again. Pinawa was the site of the Atomic Energy of Canada research. Listen, these are disgusting parasites, including experimental reactors for decades. So these are disease factories. And Clarington hosts Ontario Power Generation's Darlington Nuclear Station. The Darlington is one of the biggest disease factories Canada's ever had. It, it polluted the Great Lakes for Christ's sakes. And that it's, it's water... Uh, where it releases all the radiation into the Great Lakes, right alongside of it is the intakes for Toronto with millions of people. These are parasites. 
Their time is long come and gone. They need to be dealt with. They need to be removed. And geothermal could destroy all of them, and you can back it up with wind and solar. But geothermal should be your first move, not wind or solar. We're going to not only talk about what it's like to live in a nuclear community, in a nuclear wasteland, in a disease factory, and the horrors that that brings, but also their stupid organization, which meets a couple of times a year to discuss the common issues and work together, he said Wednesday, from his town of 1500. So they're going to sell out everybody in the community so he can get some Play-Doh, get a new backyard or get a new swimming pool or get a new hot tub for his house, sell everybody else, poison everybody for the next thousand years. Nuclear form planned ahead of South Bruce Deep Ge Geological Repository. So Bruce is once again holding a nuclear exploration form to educate the community on the safety surrounding. There is no safety. Everything is vented. You're building the deep, deep geological repository that they first looked at. Here, let me bring it up. Hang on. I'll show you what they're really actually fucking like. Just give me a second. Here we go. So the Nuclear Waste Management Organization went in there in 2020, and they bought 1,500 acres of prime farmland. They bought, but they only need 250 acres for the surface facility. And hang on, I clicked off it. Which is a square kilometer. And the remainder will continue to be used as it is today, which is farmland. I clicked off. Just give me a second. So what you're talking about is the reason you're doing farmland is because you want to move the radiation from the deep geological repackaging facility at the surface a square kilometer. They want to move that I might never find my spot. Hang on. The South Bruce Nuclear Exploration Forum is free in-person event featuring panel presentations from the nuclear industry, an exhibition area from the nuclear industry, a proposed nuclear waste management organization project. Everything is the nuclear waste industry. They have no opposition there. They have no one there to bring another, some common sense. And they sit there like they're actually, and they, they actually think they're humans, right? It's all about pushing their ideology through. Registration is not required, but is strongly encouraged. Refreshments are being provided throughout the event. And it gets even worse. Of course, they're going to target the children. They always target the children. Interactive exhibits for young adults age 12 and up are also planned for the exhibition area. Think about what kind of despicable cowards you got to be to do that. Think about what kind of revolting parasites you got to actually be to do something like that. Unbelievable, isn't it? Including the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program, Skill Opportunity Showcase, Mobile Trailer, and other STEM-based activities. So they're going to attack the children on top of that and try to manipulate them into joining in with them and promoting them. They got no opposition there whatsoever. India aims to increase its nuclear capacity to 100 gigawatts within 13 years, but they only got a total of 7 uh, or 8 gigawatts, roughly 8 gigawatts right now. So they're going to go for 8 gigawatts to another 100. Or 92, 90, 92 extra gigawatts in 13 years. Does anybody really think that that's going to happen? And they're talking about building breeder reactors, which are plutonium producers. 
Brunswick, as nuclear plant sirens undergo testing, the 38 sirens within 10 miles of the plant will sound for 5 to 30 seconds, scaring the children and the animals. And if you have a nuclear event, they'll never use the sirens. They'll never get used. State of emergency due to nuclear contamination is declared in a Russia city. This is a really strange story. The authorities insisted there was no threat to life following the leak. They don't tell you what the leak is or where it happened. A state of emergency, and every time you say the word leak, you should be terrified. Because they'll never mention another word, only the word leak. A state of emergency is to remain for at least three more days. And let me give you an example of that. Here's the, the nuclear leak from Fukushima. They say that's leaking. The building doesn't even exist anymore. And they call it a leak. And the leak covered the entire planet in radioactive fallout, but they called it a leak. And every journalist out there is more than happy to cut your fucking throats. Every one of them. A state of emergency is not going to be because of a leak. Has been declared in Russia city due to nuclear contamination. The Ruskies have not explained what is causing the alarming radiation in the specialized plant radon. So, like calling a nuclear disease factory radon is quite the betrayal on its own. A mysterious radiation source was detected, or today was removed and placed in a protective container and transported to a radioactive waste storage facility. But we don't know what the hell it is. It does nothing makes any sense. So you're not going to have a state of emergency for a single object, okay? Yet a state of emergency has remained for at least three more days in the industrial district of the city's law enforcement agencies examine the origin of the leak. It's not a leak. It's an event. It appears to have taken a week for the authorities to act. And then they show you this idiot, this moronic machine right here. This is not a real, real Geiger counter, for goodness sakes. And they're talking about microsieverts. We don't know, because we don't know what's going on. We don't have a clue what's really going on. Because it's Russia. Russia can tell you jack shit. After 13 years, some nuclear scientists work at Fukushima for nuclear meltdowns and eight nuclear fuel pool meltdowns. And 11% said no. So there's 11% of the viewers are nuclear academics who don't want to work at a nuclear meltdown. I rest my case. <laughs> A man wearing a nuclear protective mask. Again, right? They, like they call a paper suit a, a nuclear protective suit. These are these are nut jobs. His reader sounded alarming. Zero point four five microsieverts. And the highest reading visible in the screen is five point nine nine. Like this is an absurdness. Yet on the video, the man says the reading was twenty enough potentially to increase cancer. Well, there's a thousand microsieverts in a millisievert. And Japan's communities are at least 20 millisieverts, 20,000 microsieverts. So if 20 microsieverts out of 20,000 microsieverts is enough to cause fetal damages and threaten the health of the children, damage DNA, and increase cancer, then everybody on Earth should be evacuated from radioactive fallers, shouldn't they? You read here, a sign at the Times, the first human drug trial in the U.S. for a pill that reverses nuclear radiation poisoning. There is no pool, pill that can reverse radiation poisoning. It doesn't work that way. You can't get a pill. It's close to the border with China with a population of 630,000 people. And so if it's close to the border of China with 630,000 people. And it's not a, like compared to a lot of places, there's only a small population in Russia. The incidence is reminiscent of the infamous Chernobyl disaster. So how can it how can it be something you put in a container but still be reminiscent of Chernobyl? Because Chernobyl was a detonated reactor core, right? Which is tiny compared to Fukushima reactor cores, but it was enough to close nine thousand four hundred farms in Ireland, Scotland, and the United Kingdom. The initial explosion resulted in the death of two workers. 
the time of Chernobyl. 28, like, what are they talking about? 28 of the firemen and emergency cleanup workers died in the first three months. I done a, a video on Chernobyl a few days, a few shows back. And just to show people all the different studies they're doing and the death of, like, there were 600 helicopter pilots died, for goodness sakes. So to suggest there's only 28 people died, we got to start beating the fucking shit out of these people. They're getting away with genocide and omnicide, and it's not acceptable. The, an entire town which had a population of 49,000 was located three kilometers from Chernobyl Disease Factory, was completely evacuated 36 hours too late. You have to leave 36 hours before the accident happens in order not to be severely wounded by radiation. And during the following weeks and months, an additional 67,000 were evacuated from their homes in the nuclear wasteland. I'm surprised they don't call it a difficult to return zone over there like the shithead Japan does. In total, some 200,000 people are believed to have been relocated as a result of the accident. Well, the whole country should have been abandoned. I got zero <laughs> patience for the nuclear industry. When a person is exposed to a high level of radiation, typically over a short time period, the initial systems, acute radiation syndrome, ARS, includes nausea, vomiting, headaches, and diarrhea. But it, what happens is your, your body is attacking the radiation that's in your body, the atoms. It attacks every atom. Every atom is pulsing energy at the speed of light, destroying your chromosomes, your DNA, your cells, and everything else. And your body has to repair that every second also and attack the source every second, try to build a tumor around it, which could take 10, 20, 30 years. Or like in Japan, there's 865,000 cancers in the first year. And then they stop reporting from the Cancer Society. Japan's National Cancer Center said the number of patients rose by 865,000 in 2012, a year after Fukushima. And it was only pure luck that I caught that, right? And the way in which radiation affects our body is not fully understood. Like, what are you talking about? It's 100% fully understood. It's, it's absurd how actually much they do understand it. And, and what I mean by that, it's absurd because they're still using it. They know how deadly it is. A single atom in your body will eventually can trigger cancer. At 11, so like 11 atoms in a child's body will, will damage their heart severely. 50 atoms per kilogram in a child's body in the food they're uptaking will cause permanent uh, damage to their hearts. 50 atoms per kilogram in your diet for adults and animals, large animals, is permanent lesions to your organs. And you can put 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, but you can't see it. So how tiny is 50? How are you supposed to perceive that? Because you can't smell it. You can't taste it. You can't hear it. You can't feel it. You can't pick it up. You can't throw rocks at it. Absorbing high doses of radiation can dramatically increase the likelihood of developing cancers. So, high dose, let me show you what a high dose actually is. I got a, I got a neat way of explaining that, actually. I got a very neat way. Don't believe anything the nuclear industry tells you. So this was a study from the government of France. And I've shown a million to 10 million atoms. This is, that plume there you're looking at is eight days after the tsunami. That's on the, eight, or seven days, that's on the 18th of March 2011. By the way, cesium immediately damaged the heart muscles, not slow acting. So this, this is a cesium plume. This is the model. And the model is based on 30 days when it gets to the end of here. And what you're talking about is a million to 10 million atoms per cubic meter of air, and each atom is pulsing energy 600 feet every second. That's a very high dose. And because it's not going to be by itself, it's going to be saturated with curium isotopes, which is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rod. 
It's going to be saturated with plutonium, uranium, and americium, neutonium, strontium, very, very dangerous stuff that never goes away for the, in, in context of the human experience. And so the gammas, the alphas, the neutrons, the betas, are pulsing energy. When they hit each other, they change direction. They, they hit each other almost at the speed of light, and they're changing direction. And that, that effect is known as an x-ray, where they cl clap, and they change direction almost at the speed of light. So you got got an object almost at the speed of light, another object almost at the speed of light, hitting each other and changing direction. That's energy. That's incredible energy. They don't mingle together, see? And so that energy is known as x-rays. There's full body x-rays for all the species. So you're looking at the entire planet, which just sees you, we're only talking about right to second, are getting full body x-rays anyway. And that the cesium that's outside your house, even if your house is, is airproof, it's still going to pulse right through your house. It'll pulse through your, your neighbor's house down the block, through the next house, through the next house, and through your fucking house, and radiate you and your loved ones in your house. And why is this on our planet? And they're telling you it's like a fucking banana and a potato chip and walking in the sunshine and climbing a fucking mountain, flying on a fucking airplane? And the whole world just sits there with the thumb up their fucking earth and the other one in their mouth, pretending that they don't have any power. You won't believe how much fucking power your voice actually has. They're fucking terrified of your voice. If you if you put out a little tweet or a post on your Facebook and say nuclear man-made nuclear is dangerous, that's all you gotta put out. You don't have to quantify anything. That'll scare the fucking shit out of them. They'll lose their minds. They can't handle anybody having a conversation. 13 years, you see what I got? I got 30 likes, 31 viewers. On a show I've been doing for over a decade. All I do is cover nuclear news. If I was wrapping shit on a stick, there'd be 30 fucking thousand people here yucking it up, right? Nuclear power is outdated, expensive, and stupid. Thank you. May I have another? Nuclear power displaces green electricity from the power grids. 100% true. Nuclear is literally stupid. It's literally the stupidest thing on the planet. And the people involved in it are not stupid. They're monsters. They're actually monsters. St. Louis area residents make a plea for compensation from illnesses tied to the nuclear contamination. And you can plead all you want, they ain't giving you fucking nothing. They can't stand your guts. And when you die, they'll dig up your carcass after your loved ones go home, and they'll take it back to their laboratories, and they'll ash it, and they'll sniff the ashes for the isotopes, and they'll call that an academic study. You know, they took over 4,000 of the Japanese women and children that were killed by radiation back to Los Alamos National Laboratories and other national laboratories in the United States, and incinerated them and sniffed their ashes. That's the nuclear industry. You know, the nuclear industry fell... Uh, hang on a second. Most scientists and doctors are actual monsters. I got a little short video here. I'm going to put it up on the screen for you in a second. I'm going to have to adjust the uh, audio in real time for you, so it might bump up on you. Don't worry. There we go. Just bear with me. I don't want to deafen you, so. Around 1949, boys were fed radioactive milk and oatmeal at the Fernald State School in Waltham, Mass. The scientists from Harvard University and MIT fed the radioactive milk to the group of boys who have been lied to to believe that they were joining a science club. In a letter dated November 2nd, 1949, the school superintendent asked parents for their consent to experiments, but saying no mention to radiation, that they would receive a special diet to study how the body absorbs cereal, iron, and vitamins. 
A victim that used to go here said that he was treated so cruelly and badly that he was hidden. He was also stuffed in a room with 36 other children at the time, with beds jammed together, and receiving little to no education and less affection. And what happened was, a group of members got together and they actually sued the school, and every one of them got $60,000 in compensation from MIT, Quaker Oats, and the government. Yeah, Quaker, don't eat Quaker Oaks, whatever you friggin' do. Under no circumstances should you eat Quaker Oats. So imagine poisoning all the children and then calling that science. It wasn't their fucking children, was it? It wasn't their children. should be their children. We should be using their children for experiments of how to cure radiation illnesses. Get them sick with radiation, see if we can figure out how to cure it. Don't give them any fucking painkillers like they've done to your children. People impacted by nuclear contamination in St. Louis regions are urging federal lawmakers to approve a plan to spend billions of dollars to compensate Americans exposed to radiation by the government. Everybody in America was exposed. The whole country was buried in radioactive fallout from the nuclear war. They call it nuclear testing, but it was a nuclear war. The radioactive fallout was the exact same. It was the exact same. Mox oats. <laughs> James Lucid puts their mox oats, <laughs> which is probably appropriate. That's hilarious. <clears throat> Let me keep out. <laughs> That's why I try not to read the comments too often because I end up cracking up laughing. That's <laughs> so funny. People impacted by nuclear contamination in the St. Louis regions are not getting jack shit from the nuclear industry. They should all just sue the nuclear industry. Every one of them get together, chip in $100, get a bunch of lawyers, and sue everything fucking nuclear within a thousand miles of them. That's what you should be doing. Everybody should, like, if you got friends or families or loved ones that are lawyers, everybody should have a lawsuit against the nuclear industry because you're all poisoned. Everybody was. Your water's poisoned. Your food is poisoned. Like all nuclear power plants are surrounded by fucking farms. The most insidious thing you can do is poison food, right? Every nuclear waste site, every nuclear facility, every nuclear plant is surrounded by farms. Total accident, though, right? Total coincidence. <laughs> but it's not, is it? Look up farms on my site. I, I do uh, videos of like over 100 different nuclear plants. Every one of them is surrounded by farms. People impacted by nuclear is everybody on the freaking planet. Geothermal heat and untrapped, untapped Alternative to gas, oil, coal, and nuclear. And geothermal is awesome, man. Geothermal energy is suitable alternative to gas in Hungary, says one expert in response to the suggestion, suggestion that Hungary could heat with geothermal energy instead of natural gas. Of course they could. Everybody can. It was found that Hungary has great geothermal potential that could be used primarily for heating and cooling. New projects to identify geothermal resources for greenhouses in New Zealand. Yeah, like uh, um, Alberta, the cold, one of the coldest provinces we got, uses geothermal to heat huge greenhouses all winter long and summer. And uh, like we're talking about, we're talking about huge numbers. I can't remember the numbers off the top of my head. Was it fifteen thousand pounds of uh, strawberries a day or something? Not just strawberries, obviously, right? But it's it's an unbelievable amount of food they're doing with geothermal in the winter. Dead winter, minus 30, minus 40, minus 50 wind chills. Greenhouses are just like beautiful geothermal heat. Geothermal greenhouses are very common and are established technology in other parts of the world. Uh, are you aiming to crack the code on deploying geothermal energy at scale? $74 million dollars. Which is a large, that's a large investment. Probably one of the largest investments we've seen with geothermal. Which makes zero sense, right? How come it's not billions? 
How come they haven't got dozens of universities working on it? Oh, that's right, because all the money goes to nuclear and all the universities are working on nuclear. Working on stupid, idiotic, small modular reactors. Working on useless, fucking useless fusion reactors. And they put a pittance of $74 million investment on geothermal. They take, you can replace everything with geothermal. Every community can do geothermal. Every community. The technology actually exists now to go as deep as you want. With pneumatic uh, 25,000 pounds per square inch water jets will cut the rocks as deep as you like to go. But then you use pneumatic uh, water-driven hammers to pound the, the cracked rocks. And then the drill bit comes down through all of that to insert the pipes. It's simple. The technology is obsolete. And if you took a billion dollars or five billion dollars and threw at it, you would solve any any issues left. There is no issues. The only issue is they won't do anything. They won't throw any money at it. I mean, this is a massive, a lousy $74 million is actually a lousy investment, a massive investment. But it's, a, it's pittance compared to what they waste on nuclear every day. They waste 10 times more of that on nuclear each fucking day. Made alongside assessments that 10% of electricity could be generated by geothermal. No, 100% could be de generated in the next 10 years. Geothermal is everywhere. There's 2 billion times more energy under your feet than the entire planet currently uses. And it's nowhere, like 10 kilometers down. You're guaranteed at 1,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, which is more than you're going to get from gas, oil, coal, or nuclear plants. And you can seamlessly integrate these things. So you build a geothermal at your nuclear, gas, oil, coal plant, and when it's finished, you fire it up and turn off your gas, oil, coal, or stupid fucking nuclear. Your despicable nuclear, your revolting nuclear, your parasitic nuclear. It's hard to believe, you know, 30 fucking likes, that's all I got. How far am I into the video? Hour and a half into the video, and I got 30 likes. Because be, I'm lucky to get 30 likes, I should say. I'm ecstatic. I got 38 votes, even though 13% of them are saying, no, no, we can't send nuclear scientists to Fukushima. Dana, that's crazy. A limitless supply of heat exists beneath our feet within the Earth's crust. But harnessing it at a scale is proven challenging. And, you know, when the video is over, I'll have no fucking views on my page. I'll have 30 likes, I'll have 38 votes, but I might have two or three views on my video. But any other video, will like, you'll get uh, 60 or 70 percent of the people that came by during the live show. That'll show up right away when the video's over. Not on my fucking videos. I'm censored in every step of the way. I'm only here because the world has no options. We, we got to have somebody out there being honest. And I know tonight is not one of my more cleaner nights. We're using a little bit of colorful language. And fucking sue me. Now a combination of new techniques, government support, and pressing need to secure continuous clean power in an area of climate crisis. Climate crisis is caused by radiation. Radiation is global warming. Cold oil gas emissions is carbon. That don't fucking pulse energy. This, this is a plume model of 20 days of Neptunium-239 from TEPCO's numbers covering the entire planet in 20 days. Think about 80 years of these plumes from a 400 plus nuclear power plants on top of that are making these same plumes every fucking day from the fuel pools hemorrhaging radiation. And these plumes are pulsing energy at the speed of light every second in every direction. That's global warming. And you destroy the ecosystem. You destroy the bacteria. You destroy the fungus. And the insects. Without the insects, we're all going down with the ship. Until recently, global geothermal has only been visible, viable where the Earth's inner heat and simmers near the surface. It's not true. It was viable everywhere. We just wouldn't come up with the technology to dig deep enough. We got technology deep deep enough to go for oil and coal and gas, but we don't dig 
use the same technology to get geothermal. That's what they're telling you. It's the same technology. It's the same fucking hole in the ground, too. Such as hot springs or geysers. Like, they, they, what I'm trying to say is they knew the technology and they refused to have it proliferate because it would make up nuclear obsolete. And nuclear is the great scam of the century, right? And it's the genocide machine, omnicide. It kills all the species. I'm so sick of these people. It's not funny. 63 terawatts of clean, firm power, which would meet global electricity demand nearly eight times over with the super hot rocks. Again, like you can drill deep enough now to tap in anywhere on the planet. So 63 terawatts into gigawatts is 63,000 gigawatts. 63,000 gigawatts divided by 8 is 7,875 gigawatts. Think of 7,875 large nuclear power plants. Which would work out to $31 trillion, $31.5 trillion at $4 million a megawatt in geothermal. So for $31.5 trillion, they stole that much there over the last couple of years during the the the, the COVID thingy, right? So like thirty one point five trillion dollars is is not that much when it comes to energy, right? But that's enough to turn the whole planet into geothermal, according to their numbers. An A-bomb was accidentally dropped in South Carolina years ago. Is the site worth saving? And they like they like to immortalize everything nuclear, even their stupid. They destroyed Buddy's property and injured, injured a bunch of people. You can see the bomb crater up there, and this is where they destroyed the house from the detonation. Now, they said it had no nuclear on it, so what the fuck was it doing up flying around in a plane? And the nuclear weapon carried by an American crew 15,000 feet above ripped through the air and crash land on the family farm outside of Florence, 10 feet and 7,600 pounds of metal and TNT. So why was it filled with TNT? A blast that severed the spring day in two, shrapnel, mud, and splinters arcing into the air. The bomb blew a crater 50 feet wide, 25 feet deep. It leveled the nearby pine forest and mangled the family's car. The Greg's homes crumbled with Holloway's, Holiday's mothers inside. Siding peeled back like skin. Pieces of the ceiling scattered across the kitchen tables. And people don't realize how bad the impact was. He said it was a miracle that we lived through it. The bomb site is steps away from an advancing subdivision. Remember what they done in Santa Susana? Right, where they had... Uh, a molten, sock, a molten salt breeder reactor meltdown, uh, which was released four hundred at that time 460 times more radioactive fallout than Three Mile Island. It was equal to 462 Three Mile Islands melting down at the same time worth of radiation released into the environment. And now you've got a half a million people, subdivisions, living within 10 kilometers of it. And they hit it, right, for 50 years straight. No, I, I think you should preserve it. I think you should turn it into a memorial of how stupid nuclear actually is. Uh, Dennis uh, Villeneuve, is, I can't pronounce his name, it talks to direct films based on non-fictional book nuclear war scenario. Well, the nuclear war was the nuclear testing. That was a nuclear war. Same radiation, same bombs, same radioactive fallout. Except you've done it to yourself, like real idiots. Like the the idiot machine is, has always been an idiot machine. The nuclear industry has always been stupid. Like doing nuclear tests in your own, you know, on Earth anywhere is going to contaminate the entire Earth. So they went out and destroyed. Paradises, 
tropical paradises. The, like, we've all fantasized about tropical paradises, like these tropical islands in the middle of nowhere, unlimited food supply, beautiful sun all year long, don't need heat, don't need windows. Tropical paradises. The nuclear industry went out and destroyed every one of them. They went out and destroyed Montebello in Australia. They destroyed Christmas Island. And, uh, they destroyed the Marshall Islands, the, the Americans, the French destroyed, the French Polynesian Islands, and everything in between. Because the radioactive fallout was not imaginary. It was real. That's why they went out there. But going out and destroying the tropical paradises so that you wouldn't destroy the prop tropical paradises, how much sense does that actually make? They contaminated their own country so much that they went into the tropical paradises and evaporated a lot of them that can't be replaced, that were so fucking unique that the world will never understand because we've never got a chance to enjoy it because they fucking destroyed it with radiation. You know, the Marshall Islands right now is over a million square kilometers. is too radioactive to be habitable. That was a study from 2019. That's not stupid. What fucking is? He doesn't give a fuck. He's making money, right? He'll go out and paint nuclear or something good. Adaptation of Annie Jacobson's nonfiction book, Nuclear War Scenario. Strike at Donna Ray's nuclear plant widens as a second union to walk out. Well, like, this is Donna Ray in Scotland, right, which is a United Kingdom reprocessing facility. And it's going to take them 315 years to clean that site up. But look at it, right alongside of fucking farms. But it's going to take 315 years to make the site habitable again. Who's going to be around in 315 years to figure if that's fucking true or not? Right alongside of farms. So for the last 70 years, it destroyed everybody who was eating food from these farms. And then the people that got working there are young children, right, that just got out of high school. Oh, yeah, you, get, you got a high school education. You can come work. We'll train you. Come work at a nuclear wasteland because nuclear scientists ain't going to go there. Global Names Back Association Promote Nuclear Power and Ships global names which is the scariest thing imaginable the global names are the people that are going to cut your throat that's what a global name is right they're the people that will cut your fucking throat and your children's throat Korean and the Japs shipbuilders are among the members of the new energy maritime organization Nemo Nemo which is supposed to be a cute cartoon right for children Korea and Japan, haven't they done enough fucking damage here already? They want floating Chernobyl, floating Fukushima's on our oceans. Past anti-nuclear activists speak out against current plans. Luxembourg. Right now in Luxembourg, if you get sick within 30 years of living next to a nuclear power plant, you can sue the nuclear power plant. <laughs> That's the, I think it's the only country that has that law, right? If you get sick 30 years after living close to a nuclear plant, you can sue them. We all should be doing this. Everybody on the planet needs that fucking law. If anybody ate food from a nuclear, around a nuclear power plant, should be allowed to sue a nuclear, not should be, but should sue the nuclear plant. Like, and you can win the case. Why are you building, because the fuel pools are hemorrhaging radiation 24 hours a day. They're splitting atoms. All the reactor cores and the fuel pools are still splitting atoms. And that's why all nuclear power plants are surrounded by firms. Earthquake aftershocks halt the demolition of a leaning building in Taiwan. Because of aftershocks, they're still going on. So they're demolishing the building. That's a scary job, isn't it? And Taiwan's full of nuclear. You know, they, they moved a lot of their nuclear waste to Orchard Island. 
And Orchard Island was a native island for the natives. They, they kicked the natives off Taiwan Island, moved them over to another island, isolated them. And uh, it's called Orchard Island. And so about, well, a couple of decades ago, Taiwan decided to need a nuclear dump. So they went out to Orchard Island and they sat down with the natives and said, we'd like to build a canning factory for tuna and crab meat and stuff like that. And we're going to give everybody in your community a stip in at the end of each month. They don't have to do nothing. You're going to get a nice check every month for the rest of your life if you let us put a canning factory here for tuna and crab meat and stuff like that. And the natives were, sure, sure, that's fantastic. Of course you can. And so they uh, got them to sign the papers, and then they went and built a nuclear dump there. And about a decade later, the natives re realized it's not a canning factory for food. It's a nuclear dump. So they said, we want you to take it out. And the uh, Taiwan nuclear industry said, no, you signed the papers, shithead. <laughs> we got the contract for another thousand years. That's, nu that's, that's the typical nuclear story on top of that. They do that everywhere. They really are scumbags. They really are the worst of the worst of humans. Like serial, we shouldn't be doing any videos about serial killers. We should be doing videos of mass murderers called pro-nuclear. A pro-nuclear, by definition, is a serial killer. Nuclear energy cannot lead to global energy transition. Way to go. Finally, somebody got their fucking head screwed on. With nuclear energy, when things go around, they go very, 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 and to show you this picture of Fukushima. No context. Disastrous health effects due to exposure to radioactivity. 865,000 extra cancers in the first year. But like you can get literally every disease imaginable from radiation. And on top of that, you, you corrupt, you, you destroy your immune system so you're more susceptible to pathogens and viruses that were normally harmless and innocuous and benign. Last year, Japan's plan to start releasing more than a million tons of treated wastewater. What, like, what are you talking about last year? The reactors fucking blew up right away. Pooey. Within five days, they all blew up. There is, you can't contain anything when it blows up. The plumes covered the fucking planet. You picked up 30 million one-ton bags. But you're saying that last year they, f they started releasing only then? That nothing got out? Despite everything blown up, nothing got out? That's a miracle. I'd like to kick your fucking teeth down your throat if I caught you. Because you are a worthless degenerate that looks like a human. The International Atomic Energy Agency says nothing got out of these buildings, Dana. Well, look at the fucking buildings, stupid. And tell me nothing got out. You picked up 30 million one-ton bags, but nothing got out. The buildings blew up, but nothing got out. We got plume models covering the entire fucking planet, but nothing got out. Nothing got out. If I see Ralphie L. Gross here, I'm going to knock his fucking, I'll punch a hole right through his fucking head. Nuclear energy cannot lead to global energy transition. Where, where to go? Geothermal is the way to go. You invest, U.S. invest a lousy fucking $74 million in geothermal. A lousy, measly $74,000 fucking dollars. According to the Guardian, the U.S. Department of Energy estimates as much as $250 billion will be necessary for geothermal projects to become widespread throughout the country. 250 billion. At four million dollars. Is 62,500. Megawatts. Because you can't build nuclear for less than. Uh, Congress to vote on revoking uh, Biden's call for Gaza ceasefire. 
He said, uh, efforts are to place a one-sided pressure on Israel. Israel doesn't look like this, see? Right? Israel doesn't look like that. Israel doesn't look like this. This is what Israel done. It's 100% genocide. Israel doesn't look like that. Israel has 4,000 fucking tanks. Gaza has none. Israel has hundreds of jet fighters. Gaza has none. Israel has massive navy. Israel has uh, Gaza has none. Israel has a massive army, well equipped. The stu- they got the stupidest fucking flag imaginable. They're literally the stupidest looking people imaginable, and they're unbelievably brainwashed. Look at them. How can you slaughter women and children and get pictures like that and put them up on the internet? It's attacking reporters. A little kid pissed in his pants because Israeli, he knows where he's going. Israelis don't give a fuck. They're the most heartless, spineless, soulless creatures I've ever seen. They're absolutely morons. And they take, and they get the fucking arrogance to put these videos and pictures online and pretend that they're good people. U.S. nuclear industry is upbeat on small reactors. Despite setbacks, New Scale is not a setback. New, New Scale was a fucking disaster. There is no small fucking reactors. There's, there's no licenses or applications into the regulatory agencies for starters on top of that. There's nobody fucking building them. There's no sites. There's no industry. There's no supply chain. Why are you wasting all the energy, time, and effort, and hopes, and dreams on something that don't fucking exist when geothermal is everywhere. And that's supposed to be in my stories of die-offs. It's not. Nuclear, the world's stupidest, most ruthless scumbags. Here's the media pretending they're in the fuel pool on top of a building that don't exist at Fukushima. What more do you need to know? If that doesn't outrage you, what the fuck does it? I want to hear about it. I need to know. What If that doesn't make you fucking mad and see red, what does? Pretending they're in the reactor that doesn't exist so they can claim nothing got out of it. That's your fucking media is doing it. And that's some of your biggest medias... That's Australia, the biggest media in Australia. BBC is the biggest in the United Kingdom. The Great Britain, that's not so great anymore, is it? And CBS set Dorn is the biggest America, media in America. Pretending they're in a building that doesn't exist because it's harmless? Because it's like fucking fruitcakes? Because it's like potato chips? Because it's like walking in sunshine? Because it's like getting on a fucking airplane? <clears throat> no. No, 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 no. Here we go here. Let me bring up the poll. This is for Dana tonight. This is for Dana tonight. What's going on here? After 13 years, should nuclear scientists, despicable pieces of shit slash nuclear scientists, work at Fukushima's four nuclear meltdowns and eight detonated nuclear fuel plants that melted down? A little loud on the volume there, was I? Sorry. Well, yeah, 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 of course you. And when this show is over, come back to the video in five minutes or something and let the video play for 30 seconds or a minute so we can bump my numbers up because when the video is over, I'm going to have no fucking views. They're going to deny me that too. So make sure you give me a thumbs up. Hi, everybody. Hugs for everybody. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Stephen Young, let me mention that for a second. 
I donated fifty dollars a week, and by the way, thank you, Stephen, and, and you're lovely. And Stephen is going through uh, infusions. He's got a new diagnosis, and his next one is in about a week and a half or two weeks. And it's uh, three days for four and a half hours where you sit there and they're pumping, uh, I think he said chemicals through his body. And it's brutal. And there's no changes. And you got to realize he's so sick for over three years now, right? And so there's hope anyway. They said by the next time, in two weeks' time, when he gets his next infusion, he should start seeing some results. But as it stands right now, he's still m fucking miserable. Excuse the language, Stephen, sorry. He's miserable. He doesn't see any difference, right? So we should all hope and pray for him that he gets some kind of relief out of this because that's torture to go do that to yourself. And when you're already miserable and you got to sit there for four and a half hours and get these infusions pumped through your body, I, I can't imagine what, how bad it actually is. My heart goes out to him anyway. And thanks for finding the time, the energy, the effort to come by and hear me out. I'm a little bit colorful tonight. I apologize. We got nasty weather down here. Uh, snow and heavy winds. Blown a gale all day again today. It is what it is. The weather will break in a little while. Um, I haven't done nothing to the boat. I went out and played around with it on Saturday, but I'm too burnt out. My knees are shot. They're doing a bit better. We'll see everybody tomorrow night, hopefully, I would imagine. It feels like I'm back in the game. Have a great night. Take care, everybody. When the video is over in a minute, come back a minute later and just sit on the video so we can get the views to come up because I'm not going to have any views, right? Take care.